team keep it clean what's going on it's in graven here with another video and another episode of nfl questions from subs where you can ask me any nfl question you want and we answer it in a video like this you want to be a part of it you can send me an email and and y'all have been actually like 100 percent of y'all this week sent the questions to the right email team keep it clean at gmail.com when i would get an email i'd be like oh this 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 somebody that doesn't normally send questions from subscribers they probably gonna send it to the wrong nope y'all send it to the right email so i appreciate it thank you because that makes everything that much easier anyway um if you want to be part of it you can send an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you ain't even got to worry about sending on an email if you're a team keep it clean patron you can send it directly on patreon if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids if you do not want to become a team keep it clean patron you ain't even got to visit the website. It's okay. Don't feel bad at all. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much. Let's do these questions. First question came from a patron, my guy, Martin. He said, I don't know why Ravens fans are freaking out saying we aren't going to make the playoffs. So the Ravens are done. We go through this every year, with the exception of 2019. Uh, the Ravens are literally playing for the playoffs till the last possible game. I just accept this from the Ravens. Plus, uh, we, I think we play better when we are underdogs. Yeah, this is the this is normalcy for us as Ravens fans. If you've been around for even a little bit, if you've been around before 2019, um, even in a lot of Joe Flacco days, it, this this is what normally happens. Of course, you had the whole Steve Smith, uh, not Steve Smith, the Steve McNair year where they went, I think, 13 and three, uh, and then you had 2019 where they went 14 and two anomalies that's not the norm for the ravens they usually gotta fight and claw and kick their way into the playoffs but they get there so hopefully this year is no different next question came from my boy david and appreciate you being a patron as well he said engraven what's good hope all is well with you and the fam my question is do you think the ravens should take a flyer on former viking bashad breland everyone knows all too well how the ravens feel about practice altercations <laughs> But I know the Ravens had interest in Breland in the past, and I also believe he would have an immediate impact on our secondary. My apologies if this has already been asked, as I missed the latest episode of Question from Subs. Anyways, like the 20-plus players on the Ravens injury report, I'm out. Yeah, it has been asked, but it's, it's, it's all good. Um, it, it, He, yes, I think Ravens should. Like, why not try to be as strong as you possibly can heading into this stretch where, ooh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You got the Bengals. You got the Steelers. You got the Rams. Oh, my goodness. Tough, tough game. And two of these teams have played you already, so they know you firsthand. Two of these teams play you every single year, so they know you firsthand. So, hey, Ravens, they it's going to be tough, but it's, it's doable. But, yes, he certainly would help a lot. Next question came from Lynetta. She said, I ain't raving and appreciate you being a patron too, Lynetta. Thank you. She said, how are you and the family doing? We're good. Uh, I have a few questions. Do you think that the Ravens giving Tyson Williams the Gus Edwards treatment uh, when they picked him up? They didn't really use Gus the first couple of years that he was here. Uh, I hope they keep him. Tyson is not bad. He just needs a little bit more practice. I don't even think it's that. I don't even think it's that. I, I just, it's, it's something other. Then that something happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened to where they just are like, all right, Tyson, we're giving you even less than one chance. People have messed up way worse than you have, and we gave them plenty more chances. And, and we, we've even seen a spark from you. You have been the most explosive running back on this squad, but you know what? No, nah, we're good. So I, it's something deeper. I don't know what it is. I think something happened behind closed doors, but it's the weirdest thing. She also said, do you think that the way that uh, our fans are acting now when the Ravens lost or a player messes up how the fans act? Can you imagine if the fans were around when Kyle Bola was here? I don't think that they would have made it. LOL. I'm sorry for the long questions. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, what do you think? <laughs> he said, thanks for all that you do. And I appreciate you. No, I, I appreciate you. And yeah, um, I mean, it, it's frustration. It, it is what it is. And I, I know I hear a lot of Ravens fans say that, hey, if, if y'all frustrated now, y'all y'all weren't here for the Kyle Bowler years. So, yeah, he was, uh, it was rough. I hear a lot of fans always call him Kyle. I should have been a bowler because um, it, it was rough. It was rough. And I, didn't the Ravens trade up for Kyle Bowler? But hey, not every draft pick always works out, especially at the quarterback position. Next question came from Aiden. He said, Engraven, I don't know if it's too early to talk about this, but what do you think the Ravens will do for the draft? 
that's how you know like what that, that's how you know a season is going rough for a team when people start asking about the draft and and, and it's three weeks left in the season uh but people have been asking about the draft even before They've been asking about it, like, especially when Ravens continue to face injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. People have been asking about the draft for a while, so this is not even anything new. But he said, he said more specifically with the first couple of rounds, it is clear that the offensive line still needs some work, especially since McCarry and Bozeman are set to be free agents. Uh, while, oh, so with Bozeman, it all depends on what happens with him. If they let him walk, uh, which I could see happening, um, and they just be like, all right, Tristan Colon Castillo, you take over. Uh, it'd be nice to keep Bowman, but I just, I don't see the Ravens keeping him right now. I don't. Um, but, hey, you never know till you know. Uh, but if they keep him, cool. If they don't keep him, okay, They I can see them doing Tristan Colon Castillo. As far as McCary, um, he, I forgot how, because he, he's undrafted rookie free agents. They have um, these weird deals, and I, I forget exactly how they work, how many years they're for. I, I forget, so I'm not sure what his situation is going to be. He said, while on the defensive line, we have a lot of older veterans. Uh, with Brandon Williams likely leaving in free agency, we have Justin Matabike, who I think is a very solid young lineman. Yeah, Justin Matabike, he, 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 he's solid. That's a good way to describe him. Sometimes he can get a little bit quiet, um, but he... He has these splash plays where it's like, oh, okay, there he goes. Uh, and then sometimes you just you don't hear from him too much. Uh, but it's all part of the game. He said uh, Broderick Washington, though, has gotten some reps. I feel he's not quite ready to be uh, playing starter reps. Ah, uh, that's, that's an iffy one. I don't know. Because he, um, he filled in well when uh, I think that week when all them boys were out. It was early on in the season. I forgot. What, maybe was it the Lions game, I think. I think it was the Lions game. But anyway, he said the secondary needs more debt with Averett set to hit free agency. Yeah, he's gone. Anthony Averett is gone. He's about to cash in. And there's no telling what will happen with Deshaun Elliott. You described that perfectly. Uh, and finally, like last year, edge rusher. We got away, which is, a very, which is very, uh, positive, uh, a very positive of this stingy and aggressive Ravens defense. But who after that? We have an aging Justin Houston, who's also going to be a free agent. Yep. And Tyus Bowser, who last I checked, no, was in a contract year. No, no, he, he re-signed this offseason. So he, he'll be here. Uh, basically, we have all these guys who are contributors leaving because of free agency with not enough draft picks to replace them all. Apologize for the mouthful, but I wanted to hear your opinions on this. I hope you have a great day, and please keep up the great content and Ravens news. Appreciate that. Um, that's what free agency is for as well. Everything can't be gotten in the draft. I mean, you would like that. And I mean, Ravens got like 50 draft picks, so they, they could get like every position. But um, everything is not going to be had in the draft. Um, that's why it's important. That That's why it's a whole offseason. The offseason is not just the draft and it's not just free agency. It's, it's everything. Their trades, there's all that good stuff. So Ravens got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of work to do. Now, um, you, you would hope that Ronnie Stanley, he'll come back. Uh, with Jawan James, that'd be another nice little bonus. Um, but at the same time, I feel like going into the seat, like those are two starters. Those are two starters, and they could be your left and your right tackle. Now, you got to hope that they're healthy. And with uh, Ronnie Stanley, I especially with Ronnie Stanley, I, I hope the Ravens, I just feel like the Ravens need to go into this offseason as if Ronnie Stanley is not coming back. Even though they expect him to, he'll have had all this time to rehab, but they need to go into this offseason and expect him or not expect him, but act like he's not coming back and address left tackle. And they also need a, a, a swing tackle, too, somebody who can play both positions. <laughs> Next question came from my boy, Sean Smith. Uh, he said, do you think we are tanking it for the season to acquire better draft picks for the upcoming 2022 draft? Oof. That's funny because um, somebody said this. Somebody suggested that the Ravens are doing this when they go for all these two-point conversions. That they're like, okay, well, what's the worst that could happen? We lose. We didn't. We didn't convert the two point conversion. So they like, like they were uh, almost like playing with house money or something like that. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would hope not. I, I would think not. Uh, especially how they fought this season. Um, but yeah, I would hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so sad. Oh, that would be so sad. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. You never know, but I, I don't think so. Because Ravens not a tanking team. Even when they were, again, 5-11, and 11, they, they were fighting. 
They they fought every single game um, except for two where they got absolutely destroyed. Uh, but they were in literally every single game, and they only lost two games by more than one score. Uh, and that's when they, they already knew their season was over. Um, but this year, their season's not over. They could possibly get Lamar back, even though it seems like, I don't know, that maybe that uh, that injury could be worse than what they putting out there to the public. Cause you, yeah, cause you, oh, I don't know, man. It's just it's so much questions that we still got this late in the season, and so much big questions. But as far as them tanking, I would lean to the side of no. Um, it's a possibility that it's on the side of yes, but I'm hoping that it's more on the side of no. Next question came from Ravens Flock. He said, "What's good, Engraven? Hope the family is doing good. This is less of a question and more of a rant." Uh, I hope Lamar sees the disrespect from the flock and decides to grant the ungrateful ones their wish and leave. I believe Lamar brought so much to the Ravens, not just on the field, but off of it, too. Fans, free agents wanting to play with him, media attention, etc. Now they want to get rid of him. So ungrateful. Also wanted to point out that when Huntley was in, a lot of short routes were ran, so the ball came out quick. Not saying Lamar d does not hold on to the ball sometimes, but G-Row usually calls deep routes with him. Dare I say, sabotaging him? See, this is something that I've heard a lot from people, too, that they feel like the, the Ravens are sabotaging Lamar. But how would that benefit them at all? How would it benefit them to sabotage Lamar? Well, the only way that that would benefit them would be when it comes to money, because they could be like, look, Lamar, look at these numbers. What, what are you doing out there? While well, all in the back of their mind, they're like... Ah, we got him. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, EDC, I got you, my friend. I got you. Watch, watch this, watch this. Lamar, look, those are your statistics. Those are the numbers that you put up. How? What's going on, man? What's, what's that about? We, we, we can't pay you top tier money. We, we got to give you something lower. That's the, that's the only way that a, a sabotage would make any sense. Um, I would hope that they wouldn't be doing that, but I don't know. Business can be... Really nasty sometimes, especially in NFL. Anyway, um, he said the flock makes the mistakes of pushing their 30 plus win QB out. Uh, oh, he said if the flock makes that mistake, it will haunt them until he retires. I don't even know if I even made sense, but I had to let the frustrations out. And I think some of these, and he put Ravens fans, are really fans of other teams stirring up the pot. Oh, no, no, no. It's Ravens fans too. Trust me. It, it, it certainly is. Whew, it's this all season gonna be crazy, man. Lamar is under contract next season, though. They got the fifth year option, so he's under contract. Um, Tyler Huntley's under contract too, so they got both of them under contract. Um, we're gonna see how this thing turns out in the long run. We may not find out the answer next year. Um, it may be, and it won't may not be until next off season. Um, or unless Lamar signs a deal next year, so that could happen, but. Say, for instance, a scenario uh, where Lamar Jackson is done for the rest of this year, if he is, then the Raven, if, if they, it would be smart of them to try to sign him this offseason because they could base it on what have you done for me lately. Now, uh, it would be smart of Lamar to be like, nope, I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to play that fifth year option. I'm, no, it's not going to be this year. That would be smart on his part. But on their part, I'm sure uh, if he is done for the year, then I'm, I'm sure they, they may try to ramp up them contract talks this offseason and be like, oh, okay, hey, let's try to take advantage of this bad season that he had and try to get him for cheaper. So we'll see. Next question came from JT. He said, what's good, Engraven? JT here, Baltimore fan from Rhode Island. Long time listener, first time sending a question. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Appreciate it, JT. He said, I don't really do this, but I just had to vent. Being a fan of the Ravens has been tough this year, especially after these last few weeks. I just watched a video of Devontae Adams about the, of the Packers show screenshots of our DBs double and triple covering him. And I'm just over here like, so? Like, guy, our team is depleted, so uh, we're going to have to adjust. And it's not like he had the biggest game. He did get his teammates single coverage looks, and that's to be expected, obviously. I'm just like, bro, relax. You didn't even hit 50 yards, and y'all had to battle a depleted secondary, just a depleted team overall, and struggle. I don't know why that really got to me. I, I just wish we would have won this game. Uh, yeah, me too. They had an opportunity, but yeah, we ain't even got to get into that. I uh, hope these last three weeks go well. I still believe in this team. I still believe we can compete. Hope this finds you soon. Uh, you and the fam be easy. Hashtag team keep it clean. Appreciate it, JT. Yeah, man, I... um. 
I didn't really think it was a big deal. I know the media was like, they, they, I, the, this is why you got to have context. You got to have context. Even if the Ravens had uh, their starters in and they were double teaming Devontae, okay, like this is one of the, the best, if not the best receiver in the league right now. Would you, you, you want us to be upset that the Ravens were double and triple teaming? Of course not. This dude is a, he's nice. He is a beast. And the Ravens ain't want him to go off. And he didn't. He got a touchdown, but he had like, I think, 44 yards, something like that. So, I mean, th like I said, this is why you got to have context because a lot. I saw a lot of media being like, oh, man, yeah, look at Devontae. He circled the plays where the Ravens were double, triple teaming him, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, but do you know who was out there for the Ravens? <laughs> like, do you know what secondary we had left that was playing for the Ravens? It was rough, man. So, no, nah, it, it wasn't a big deal. Next question came from my guy Jarvo. He said, which player are you looking most to see healthy next year? Uh, any player that got a Ravens jersey on? Because literally this, this has been, like, bad. Before I know uh, one of my guys in the comment section, he would ask, oh, and this was early on in the season. He was like, oh, man, does this remind you of 2015? I said, no, 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 no. Because the Ravens are winning, and the Ravens still have their quarterback. But then now... Like, at this point in the season, it's like, oh, yeah, like, we could keep losing everybody. We even lost a quarterback temporarily, so they say. We'll see. Temporarily, though, so they say. I don't know. But, um, I, like, we even lost the quarterback, but they've been competing still, but and they're still in the thick of things. So, it is very similar to 2015, but very different at all at the same time. Obviously, similar with the injuries, losing everybody. But Ravens are in a fight for a playoff spot, and that is something in 2015 that they were absolutely not. He said, I know we want, to, we want everybody back at full strength, but which one player are you ready to see next year? Um, I, I would say Lamar. I would say Lamar because throughout, like, I would say 90% of this year, he has not been healthy. Because Lamar has not been running the same that he, he hasn't been running the same way. He has, he's been looking a lot slower, a little bit more lethargic and whatnot. His cuts haven't been the same. He, he just, he's not the same Lamar. That he was before. Um, he said, also, who you got going and winning the Super Bowl? I got the Packers winning it all and beating the Chiefs or the Bills. Oh, man. I don't even know. I really don't even know. Um, I have no clue. If I had to pick somebody right now, uh, I would probably say, like, I was about to say, I was about to say Packers over Bucks, but that's both NFC. Um, mm, I would probably say Packers, especially because they're getting ready to get. Uh, Jaya Alexander back They're getting ready to get Zadaria Smithberg um, I will say Packers And Chiefs been on a roll Bills They They, they been a little shaky But anything pop Like AFC I feel like it's just such a toss up NFC is much less of a toss up I mean obviously anything could happen Any given Sunday Or Saturday Or Wednesday Any day But um, I feel like in the on the NFC side In the Super Bowl Either Packers or Bucks uh, then the AFC side, either Chiefs uh, or Bills, uh, Steelers could go on a run. Um, I, I mean, I would hope Ravens, but I mean that that's looking a little bleak right now. <laughs> they, they they still trying to get in the playoffs. Um, but Steelers are too. But uh, I don't even know, man. I, I I just I got no clue. Next question came from my boy Dave Disco. He said, uh, "Pray blessings to your family and, and your dog Pookie. I appreciate it." I'm a huge advocate of planning for the future, so I'm always looking ahead to next season and beyond. I also believe that the running back attack is critical to the Ravens' success. After watching what has happened to the dynamic run talent of Saquon Barkley, his ACL, uh, would you agree? Excuse me. Would you agree that knee injuries can take years off of a running back's career? Wow, where all this gas come from? I don't know. Um, well, anyway, he said, would you agree that knee injuries can take years off of a running back's career? You could say that, but they play a very demanding position especially if a team runs 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 um and but then you could be like hey adrian peterson but he's like an anomaly but anyway uh he said um i'm not a doctor but i personally believe that one year is not enough time to recover from a torn acl for a football player uh, specifically a running back. Maybe Marcus Peters can prove otherwise. I told all my Giants fans, friends, that they were bringing Barkley back too soon. And what do you know? He was back on the sideline with more injuries, an ankle and a knee. Are you of the same mindset that DeCosta should not put all his eggs into the baskets of Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins? Would you agree that uh, rushing running backs back from injuries can often lead to re-injury and even new injuries like uh, hamstring or ankle injuries due to overcompensating and likely decreased leg strength? 
Um, I'm, I don't think you should really rush anybody back from an injury. Not just running backs, but, uh, and this is something that we talked about a lot this year, like with a Ronnie Stanley, uh, with a Derek Wolf, with a Nick Boyle. With a Nick Boyle, Ravens like, all right, Nick Boyle activated, he's back. We like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we like, hold up, where, where'd Nick Boyle go? Oh, uh, guys, sorry, he's injured. It's like, huh? But, so yeah, but yeah, certainly with running backs too. Uh, he said, have you seen the running back Kevin Harris out of uh, SC University? No, I haven't, because I don't, I don't be watching college like that. He's not ranked among the top five college running backs, but I happen to believe that he is a natural-born Raven. This running back has a very, very similar height, weight, and speed of Jonathan Taylor, whom we could have easily drafted before Dobbins. We could have had them both. Now, that would have been, I don't remember what round he was drafted in, but we got to think about the situation, though. We already had a Mark Ingram. We already had a Gus Edwards. We had already had a J.K. Dobbins. They're going to draft another running back? Like, and we had a Justice Hill, too. So what? they're they going to have a f five running backs? No, nah, that, that just it wouldn't have made sense. All right, he said, in order for the Ravens to dominate the NFL, the run game must be exceptional and stout. Uh, Lamar needs a stud runner who has not suffered injury. Gus and J.K. will come back, but let them fully recover. Let them regain their football strength and mentality. Uh, do we want them to end up like Sa Saquon Barkley? Uh, yes, we des desperately need a revamped and younger offensive line, but wouldn't you agree that Green Bay hasn't been without an elite quarterback because they draft quarterbacks even when they don't have a pressing need? Uh, they strengthen their strengths. Green Bay once had Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and Kurt Warner at the same time. Shouldn't we take that same approach with our running backs as long as Lamar or Snoop are our quarterbacks? The more elite our running backs are safer and less often injured are our quarterback. Yeah, having a good running back does alleviate a lot of pressure off of the quarterback. And um, <clears throat> chemistry is huge, too, because we saw, like, I, I really thought that, oh, okay, we picked up Devontae Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, uh, Latavius Murray. Um, I feel like I'm missing somebody. But I'm like, we picked up those running backs. All right, cool. Oh, we'll be straight. As long as Lamar back there, we'll be straight in the run game. Nope. Wrong. Uh, running backs, they definitely do still matter, especially when it comes to the Ravens. Um, Lamar didn't have chemistry with those guys. They don't do the RPOs nearly as much. Um, it's just, it's different. The run game is much different. And, and it's gotten better over the period of the season, but it's still not the same as it used to be. Uh, so... It would just, um, it would help a lot if uh, if we had those guys back. But yeah, Ravens got to be smart about it. Now, both of them were gone before the season even started. So that helps with their recovery time um, and then just getting back in the groove of things. But this is why I think Devontae Freeman, I think they're going to uh, keep him around at least for the preseason. Um, and I don't, I don't think that Gus Edwards or J.K. Dobbins are going to see one snap in the preseason. I, I think Harbaugh is not going to take that risk. I, I don't think he, I think he's going to be like, nope, I, no, I'm not going through this again. And I think that he and the Ravens, they're going to be scarred from this season, even though something to think about. Uh, the Broncos, their head coach, he said that the Ravens with uh, player safety, that they, that's not their thing. They don't care about player safety. Da, 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 da. It's like, Man, he just hating because Ravens ran for all these yards on him. That's it. They, that Ravens broke the record for 100 rushing yards and Broncos ain't stop him. Yeah, Ravens did it on the very last play. Oh, man, you're just talking. And as a matter of fact, he was somebody that in, in the fourth quarter of a game last year against, I think, the Dolphins, he was still throwing the ball, but the game, the game was already over. So I'm like, are you talking about player safety? What? But he was somebody that used to work for the Ravens. He's somebody that used to work under Harbaugh. Um, and if we recall, we were don't it was it was it used to be like every year if y'all remember it used to be like every year where Harbaugh would get fined for not following the rules for practice. It used to be like every year he would get fined. They would find like a hundred thousand, however much, however many hundred thousands of dollars that he would get fined. So Vic or well Vic Fangio, I think he was just. Trying to let us know, it's just trying to give us a nice little reminder, like, uh, this, this is who he is. This is who this guy, hey, play and say, no. So that's something to think about, too, when it comes to these injuries and whatnot, when it comes to the player safety. It's just something to think about. But anyway, 
He said his final statement in reference to the question that I sent. My main point is that I believe putting 100% faith in the return to form of J.K. and Gus could prove to be very unwise. With the exception of his special teams play, Justice Hill wasn't bringing uh, in the return on investment. Uh, at least not enough to hope that when healthy, he could carry the load. Strengthen your strengths like the Packers, like Ozzie did with the Ravens defense for years. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Uh, Cause you you want these guys to come back, and you want these guys. I feel like I got an eyelash in my eye, but you want these guys to be one hundred percent when they come back. Um, and both of them, yeah, two both ACL injuries here is two top running backs, and that would be a lot to expect. That, all right, y'all come back and be who you were once before right away. That, that'd be a lot to ask, especially if they don't play in the preseason, which they're not. Um, but. That's why. That's why I really do think that they that I, they bring him back, Devonte Freeman, to try to like help them come back and not put everything on them, not put as much pressure on them. And unless they bring in somebody else too. Next question or comment. I had to take a little break because Pookie decided to eat something that some food that dropped, and she ended up throwing up. And so that was not team. Keep it clean. Anyway. She is fine. Uh, came from Shadow Badger Cat. He said, I have a feeling we are either going to blow the Bengals out or have a really disappointing game. I mean, that really, that covers everything that could possibly happen. Uh, <laughs> like, if the Ravens get blown out, it would be very disappointing. If the Ravens lost a very close one, it would be very disappointing. And if the Ravens blew out the Bengals, then, okay, they blow them out. So I, I, I feel like that covers like three out of four things that happen because the, the fourth would be if the Ravens win a close game. Next question came from DeAndre. He said, Engraven, what's up? I got a couple of questions today. Do you think Project Pat holds this offense back? Everyone is talking about how good the offense is without Lamar, but no one is talking about how good it looks without Project Pat. The run game has also looked better. With that being said, what are the chances the Ravens release, trade, or put him back on a D-line next season? Well, um, he is a free agent. He is in the last year of his deal so gonna be an interesting offseason this this, uh, this Ravens offseason is just gonna it's gonna be filled with a lot because we got a lot of questions on some key guys that could or could not uh be back with the Ravens um and the offense yeah I haven't heard many people talking about that I think with the with Patrick Ricard out Nick Boyle was there and Ben Cleveland was there too now but um with Patrick Ricard out uh the offense was able to have receivers in more and, and do less of the stuff that involved him that's not a shot at Patrick Ricard at all but it more so praise for the Ravens being like okay whoa so we we can we can run some offense with actually wide receivers running wide receiver routes not Patrick Ricard running wide receiver routes. so just every time I see it it's like oh we love Project Pat but we also love when Ravens use their wide receivers as wide receivers and not their fullback as a wide receiver anyway um, last one, not a question, just a couple of thoughts. Sharp looked really good at right tackle. He certainly did. But now he's on COVID list, so, yep. Um, if Lamar could help out the offensive line, how Huntley did, he could really be dangerous. True. Uh, I saw a couple of plays where the tackle was about to get beat around the edge, but Huntley stepped up a little, which, showed, uh, which slowed down the edge rusher uh, and allowed our tackle to get his hands on him. Then Huntley stepped back. That little move gave him a couple more seconds to find someone open downfield. It also kept everything in front of him, and he didn't get flushed out of the pocket like Lamar does. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tyler Huntley, I'm sure he's taking plenty of tips from Lamar Jackson. And now Lamar Jackson can do the same thing in reverse, take some tips from Tyler Huntley. They can help each other out. They can help the offensive line out. They can help the offense out. And boom, everybody's happy. Speaking of Tyler Huntley and Greg Roman, next question came from Sid the Sloth from Ice Age. He said, hey, Engraven, hope that the family's doing well. This is my first question to sub, so here it goes. Has Snoop proved himself to be traded to a team, or do they start using him in special packages, or is that in the vault? Also, despite all the injuries this year, I think Greg Roman is going not just because of this year. I just think his lack of adjustment, uh, and I wonder how much influence Keith, uh, Keith Martin and T. Williams uh, had uh, if they if he if they proved enough to earn the opportunity, oh, to be offensive coordinator, you're saying? Um, we won't know till we know. As far as Snoop, yeah, I, I think he's done. He's shown enough to prove that he could be traded. Somebody could take a chance on him because one, he's on a cheap deal. Uh, he's on an un, not even a rookie, but an undrafted rookie free agent deal. Um, and we've seen guys show less and get traded. Like um, Jimmy Garoppolo, J Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo, he played in like I think what it was like three or four games. Then he got traded for like a second round pick, something like that. So if Snoop, oh boy, like yeah, yeah, he he's shown enough 
Um, but Ravens could also keep him too. And they could have that guy that they know is ready and willing to come in just in case something happened with Lamar. Um, and as far as Greg Roman, man, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Because I know Harbaugh ain't going to fire Greg Roman um, unless they like, all right, Harbaugh, either you go or he goes. Then Harbaugh going to be like, all right, Giro, well, you want to be our uh, pass game specialist or run game specialist? So oh, we got to make up some kind of position so you can turn it down and I don't have to fire you. But you, you want that? And Greg Roman, oh, no, I don't want it. And then, oh, okay, boom, he's out. Next question came from my guy Benjamin. He said, hey, Graven, what do you think about signing free agent safety Quandry Diggs this offseason? Uh, he is having another standout year with the Seahawks, and I don't think that they are going to pay him this offseason. He's also making plays on the ball, which is something that we've been lacking. Interested to hear your thoughts. I don't think they're going to go in a different direction uh, at safety uh, other than, um, uh, well, I can't, Brandon Stevens. I, I don't think they're going to, even if they bring back Deshaun Elliott. I don't think I think that he is going to be that guy. I think they're going to stick with him there. And he hasn't been bad. And he's a rookie. This is the first time playing a position. He's been doing all right. Um, but I, I don't think they're going to come up, come up off of him uh, at the free safety position. Uh, so I think they're going to be locked in to him. And I don't think he's going anywhere. So I don't think that uh, Quandre Diggs would be coming to the Ravens. Next question came from my boy Terrell B. He said, do you believe that if the play calling and predictable play calling does not change, will EDC and Ozzy decide to go with T. Williams or Keith Martin uh, to take over uh, the helm and get the chance to be offensive coordinators? Uh, and I mean, um, I don't know, man. I... Uh, I don't know. I know Ravens, they do like to promote from within. They really do like that. Um, so maybe. But for some reason, I just, I just feel like they're going to get overlooked if the opportunity ends up coming up. I just feel like they'll get overlooked. I'm, I'm, we'll see, though. But that's just my gut. Anyway, he says, well, and that's a big gut, too, by the way. Uh, one more we love. We love the roll of the dice for going forward on fourth. But what's your thoughts on going forward after marching downfield, after eating up clock and having nothing to show for? Yeah, oh, you're talking about the first drive of the Packers game. Um, I, I thought that they should have kicked the field goal. But I understood why they went for it on fourth. Because they felt like, all right, we've been moving. We've been moving the ball. Let's get a touchdown instead of a field goal. And, and I, could, I could understand that. So I wasn't the maddest that they went for that second fourth down on that first drive. Like I said, I, I thought they should have taken a field goal. So you have something. Uh, but what I was more so upset at was not even that they went for it on fourth, but what they went for it with. And I feel like we're not talking about that as much. I, I hear everybody talk about, oh, yeah, they should have took the field goal, which is right. But the play, you, you call a QB draw? A QB draw? And it's like... With the QB draw, they save that for the worst time. They say they bring that out at the worst times every time. Every time. I feel like they need to just delete that out of the playbook, man. Get rid of it. Because whenever they have Lamar do it, whenever they have Tyler Huntley do it, it just always is so bad. It's so bad. And that's what you do on the fourth and, and goal. And, um, come on, man. He said, as always, I hope all is well with you and the family in these crazy times. Have a good one. Appreciate you, man. Shout out to you and your pops, too, man. Next question came from my guy, Terry. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing good. Just wanted to ask you, do you think that the Ravens should get rid of Greg Roman now during the season or off season? I mean, it's three games left. I feel like, I feel like they just, just ride it out. Like, you could get rid of him now, but... Just ride it out, ride it out. But have um have somebody else step in for those fourth down plays. Cause again, they like you, you saw what they did against the Packers. That was a great. They, they called a great offensive game, phenomenal offensive game. Except for them, except for the fourth down and except for the, the critical plays, the crucial plays. Except for that, the two point conversion, terrible call, and and the the fourth down on the first drive, the second fourth down on the first drive. Well, it was all or nothing. The all or nothing plays, have somebody else call those. But, the, like, just, just ride it out with him at this point. He said, in my opinion, I say now. The reason I, why I said that is because I feel as though we haven't even seen the best of Hollywood, Lamar, and Rashad Bateman. And honestly, I think we can utilize Devontae Freeman more in the passing game. For you to be an offensive coordinator and not use your first-round pick, Rashad Bateman, that much besides the Browns game is a little sketchy. I feel as though Keith Williams, the passing game specialist, would do a good job. But Lamar and his weapons, uh, and to put Lamar and his weapons in the best place to succeed. Wish nothing but the best to you and trust. Appreciate it, Terry. Um, I just, 
I mean, I, I feel like we, you you could do that now, but I feel like at this point, like I said, you might as well just ride out. It's three games left, and um, it's three games left. So you hope that things get better, but if not, I mean, the offseason is so close. Oh, that's so sad. Wow. After I'm recording this on Saturday, by the way, Saturday, December 25th. After tomorrow, it's only going to be two games left in the regular season. That is so sad, man. Next question came from my guy Ejon. He said, what's up, Flock and Engraven? Hope all is well. Uh, my question is, what do you think the Ravens' offensive identity is? They don't have one. Uh, one year, we're running it confidently, breaking and setting rushing records on everybody with a three tight end set, Hurst, Boyle, and Andrews. Now we have three wide receivers, Bateman, Hollywood, and Watkins to throw to. And ironically enough, Lamar gets injured on the passing play while his interceptions go up. Uh, yeah, Ravens don't have an identity. They don't know who they are. They haven't known who they are all year. Uh, he said, are Greg Roman... And Harbaugh smart enough to change up the scheme week to week like Bill Belichick. Again, what is the offense's identity? They just don't, they don't have one. They don't have one. They're not the passing team. They're not a running team. They are a team just, hey, whoever's out there, whoever's left to play, cool, let's run with them. And let's just have some stressful games. Let's have some down to the wire games. Um, but they, they don't have any one thing that they specialize at on offense except uh, heart attacks. And the last question for the week on this episode of Question from Subs came from my boy Droid209. He said, how's it going, Graven? Hope all is well and everyone is healthy. So I understand what you were saying when you answered my question. I was just trying to add some positivity, but I can see how my statement can be misleading. We can't go for moral victories when at the end of the day, it's all about the chip. So I'll be man enough to say my take is wrong. My question is, how would you grade every position, including coaches, and what needs to be changed? Thanks again. <laughs> First, what needs to be changed? Um, I, when it comes to, I know everybody like offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. But it, it's, I feel like the, if Harbaugh hires somebody, I feel like it's going to end up being the same stuff. What, what I feel like the, the biggest change should be uh, should be that the Ravens, they do what's best for the Ravens. And they don't do what's best for individual coaches. And what I mean when I say that, um, I feel like, okay, they could bring on an offensive coordinator. But don't be threatened if it's somebody that is trying to be a head coach. Or don't be threatened if it's somebody that could possibly take over as a Ravens head coach. I, I feel like they bring in guys that are decent, but guys that are, are decent enough, but that don't necessarily have the brightest future. And and, and as far as coordinators and, and stuff like that, like Greg Roman, he's... Right now, has he been a bad offensive coordinator for the Ravens overall? No, no. He, he's obviously been part of the good. He's been part of some bad too. But there's been a lot of good with Greg Roman, and we appreciate that so much. He's been a great introductory coach to offensive coordinator to Lamar and that Ravens offense. Bunch of young guys, and they, he, he was, his running game is just amazing. Amazing. Passing game, but amazing. Very efficient offensive coordinator. But it's, it's time to take it to another level. But Greg Roman, been around for a while. Even worked with the Ravens back in, I think, 2007 as an offensive line coach, I want to say. But anyway, Greg Roman, offensive coordinator at Buffalo. Greg Roman, offensive coordinator with San Fran. Greg Roman, offensive coordinator with the Ravens. He ever been a head coach? He been a head coach before? Has he gotten an offer for, to be a head coach? Why, how come Greg Roman has never been a head coach before? It's something that you just you, you think about. Even after coaching the the 49ers to a Super Bowl which they lost to the Ravens by the way well how, how come he how come he with what he was able to do with with Tyrod Taylor with, with Colin Kaepernick with Lamar Jack why is he never been a head coach and this is what I mean when I say I feel like they they bring in guys that are good enough but that are almost peaked peaked in their careers as coordinator now with Gary Kubiak it just so happened to work out for him with, uh, what's his name, with John Elway, because they're friends. They got big trust for each other. And he wasn't even ever expecting to be a, a head coach again, but he, and he said, like, he was a head coach for the Texans. And then that went haywire. 
Uh, and then he's like, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna just be offensive coordinator. That's that's it. That's all I want. Da, da, da. Oh, I'll, I'll be back next year as offensive coordinator for the Ravens. But his boy, he he was like, hey, come through for my Broncos, man. We just we just got rid of this dude. We got whipped in the suit. We just got rid of this dude. Um, I forget his name. Uh, but come through, man. Come through, Gary. Boom. We got hey Gary. We got the team ready for you and everything. You can bring over a couple people, whatnot. Bring in a couple people from your staff, whatever. But we 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 got it pretty much covered as far as personnel and whatever. Yeah, we go through the draft and all that free agency, da, 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 But we pretty much got the we got the core guys. So you'll be straight. Boom. Um, but like who else? Jim Caldwell, uh, cause he took over after they fired Cam Cameron. Cam Cameron was never uh, a head coach anywhere. He's the offensive coordinator a couple of places, but. Uh, it worked out for Jim Caldwell, so shout out to him. Um, Jim, oh, no, that was a QB coach, though. I'm going way back, because um, when Flacco had a QB coach, I think it was Jim Moore. Not Jim Moore. Oh, who's the guy? He used to coach for the Washington football team. Oh, I cannot think of his name. Not Jim Moore. Oh, he was a Ravens quarterback coach. Oh, I can't think of his name, man. Oh, uh, but Marty Morningwake. Marty Morningwake, um... He he was a head coach, I believe, for the Jets, but that just they flunked out. So he, he peaked already. But anyway, my, my point is they and we can go through more offensive coordinators, but they uh Mark Tressman, he was a head coach for the Bears, but that went terribly wrong. He peaked already. They 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 bring in guys that have peaked already. They don't bring in guys that are on the come up. They bring in guys that have peaked already and are not, like, getting ready to elevate to another level. So that's why I feel like the Ravens should do what's best, not for individual coaches, not to, all right, this guy peaked already. All right, we can bring him in. No, do what's best for the team so you can maximize this team. That's what I feel like they should do, in my opinion. And But I, do I feel like they'll do that? No, I don't. I don't. Now, he said grade the coaches. Did you say players too? I think he might have said something crazy like grade the coaches and the players like I'm a teacher or something. Uh, he said, how would you grade every position, including coaches? Okay. Um, quarterbacks. This year, Lamar and Hunt, mm, I give them a C. Probably, yeah. Probably like a C plus. Maybe like a, yeah, probably like a C plus. B minus, because with Lamar, um, you gotta rem context. You can you can look at the numbers and be like, ooh, yeah, gross. Uh, also look at the context uh, with who his offensive coordinator is, who who he is, what he's done. <coughs> um, all the players that we have left over, all the players that we lost. Uh, his play, um, his decision making, uh, what he's been able to do, uh, what he hasn't done. Uh, then you look at Tyler Huntley, what he's been able to do when he stepped in. So overall, yeah, I say like C plus B minus. Offensive line, uh, I would say uh, mm, maybe like a D plus. Uh, and now this is where I feel like coaching um, is big right here too. Uh, but maybe they feel like, hey, you know what? Maybe we don't have our best five out there. I don't know. Um, it's been rough, but yeah, I'd say probably like a D plus, C minus. Wide receivers. Um, I feel like the wide receivers have been better this year. Uh, so I'd give them probably like a, uh, maybe like a B minus for, for their opportunity to give. Because this ain't, like, Ravens, since Ravens don't have an identity, sometimes they'll be pass happy, sometimes they run a little bit more, and they just like, we don't know who they are. So the receivers, I don't think the receivers even know who they are. So, and that sounds really sad, and it kind of is, but tight ends, um, a B plus, maybe an A minus, and, and that would, I said, nah, B, B plus. Mark Andrews, A, he gets an A. But um, Nick Boyle, they rushed him back, so he hasn't been himself. He hasn't really been able to contribute much. And those three games left, but based off right here, right now. Josh Oliver, they got him for cheap. Um, very, they traded a conditional pick for him. He didn't make the team, so Ravens end up having to give up a, a seventh round pick or a sixth round pick, one of them two, to the Jaguars for him. Uh, but he just hasn't contributed like Harley at all. Um, 
so they haven't really like used him like that. Uh, the, the, yeah, Eric Tomlinson, he's been around. Um, so and I, they were smart to not cut him because they they knew Nick Boyle wasn't back all the way. Because I remember saying that, oh yeah, they're gonna keep Eric Thompson initially for the roster and put Nick Boyle on injury reserve, and um, and when he comes back, then they probably cut Eric Thompson. But they brought Nick Boyle back, and they said, no, Eric Thompson, you ain't going nowhere. They knew Nick Boyle wasn't healthy. Rushed him back, then he got hurt again. Anyway, um, so yeah, tight ends, I probably get him a B, uh, B plus, B minus, something like yeah, B plus. Because again, Andrews, he he got the A because he been going off, but. Everybody else, uh, based off of their situations, and not even necessarily them, but more so the Ravens, the Ravens' use of them, or lack thereof. Uh, who else? Defensive line. Defensive line. I, I give them a. Uh, I give them a B. I give them a B. Probably a B plus even, uh, because they, despite all the injuries everywhere, they still been a number one rush defense, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Now, when you talk about pass rush, ooh, yikes. Uh, that's a little different, but I think that's more scheme than anything. Uh, linebackers, I give them a, uh, I give them a B. Patrick Queen started off rough, but Ravens, they called for reinforcements again with Josh Bynes. They said, hey, what's up, big head? And he came through again and saved the day, just like he did two years ago in 2019. Came through, saved the day for the Ravens. Um, so I give them a, a B, probably a B minus. Um, cause they had, they had to call for help again and not saying they're not allowed to call for help, but, uh, they just, they, I, it wasn't going to be getting done if they didn't get help. Um, outside linebackers, Bowser, Dafe away, Justin Houston. Uh, I give them probably like a, a B and again, it's scheme is so important, man. Scheme is so important because. They're not in a scheme where they're going to produce like that. They're not. They are not going to put up these sexy sack numbers like that. They're not. This scheme is not built for sack numbers. I think that's why Wink said it. Hey, sacks are overrated because he knows his scheme is not built for sacks. It just doesn't happen like that. But anyway, so I get him a B. <laughs> uh, cornerbacks. Oof. How can I even grade them? Because everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. Everybody is gone. Um, so I'd probably say like a D secondary, uh, probably like a D. Yeah. Uh, special teams kicker, Justin Tucker. Whenever he does get used, <laughs> he gets an A. Sam Cook, uh, he gets an A. Um, uh, yeah, I guess that's it, right? I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, I guess that's that.